Almost three weeks have passed, crossing Germany, Netherlands, Belgium and north of France. I'm alone and I'm loving every single moment of it. Um, today I left Paris. I am now on the way to Fontainebleau. The biking path so far has been good, followed the, the river for the majority. My goal was reaching La Loire, which would become my guide all the way to the ocean. Quick uh, update from day one again of being solo in France. I am extremely tired. We went to bed at three yesterday in Paris. And for some tourism anyway, so this is uh, Melon. Melon. Uh, and that is the church of Saint Aspe. First, I had a stop in Fontainebleau and visited the famous castle, enjoying the great weather. The rhythm following the river was easy and relaxing. One direction, gravel biking path and sunny days. Every break had some beautiful place to offer. Castles and churches everywhere. I'm uh, following La, La Loire, the river, and, and it's quite nice, quite easy. It's all biking path. I never have to use maps except when I enter cities and I want to look for what to visit or looking for the classic bakery on the way. I think I'm exploring every bakery in France. Every bakery in France. I really took the time to bike into every hilly town and explore it. Not every moment on the bike was amazing. And we are still on the way to Tour. This way feels never ending. Like those days you bike 40 kilometers extra to a castle that is closed and you get caught in the rain and end up eating at a bus stop. And finally your rack breaks while walking around town and the only open shop is owned by two of the slowest bike mechanics on earth. Besides all the great castles and views, my whole experience along the river was so much about the hospitality and the beauty of sharing experiences, attempting to communicate in a foreign language and connecting for a brief moment with someone is likely you won't see again. Today was a super good day. Uh, I think it just, I just wanted to compensate for how bad yesterday went, how badly. Um, so I just started with a super positive attitude and I think it paid back. I got to know a super cool guy in tour and then, I don't know, I chatted with a lot of people and I managed to stop at a castle. So everything went well. Unfortunately now it's raining but it's already so much better than rain in Germany because it's not cold so I can just stay with a shirt and uh, it will dry up quickly, but it is a lot of rain. And the only unfortunate thing is that right now I'm in uh, Cannes Saint -Sam Martin. I don't know how you say it. This place would be very cool because it has a panoramic view, and from the top you can see all La Loire. But right now it is uh, all white, and I don't think one can see anything. After ending La Loire Velo, the biking path along the river. I reached the snake in the ocean, and with it, the beginning of the Velo Seine, the biking path coasting the ocean. I wanted to do a little video to celebrate because I left Berlin 22nd of May from my room, and I just arrived at the ocean. So I'm at the Atlantic Ocean. I just arrived. We are in the little town of Pornik. I managed to wake up early, but in the end I chilled, had coffee, it was frightening. Please, all French viewers, don't get mad at me. But to me, La Loire really felt like the demarcation line between North and South. 
the food, the architecture, everything changed. The way was simple, with a deep blue on the right side, keeping me company. And when that was not enough, history podcasts were my favorite. In contrast, they write, no organized unit of the Imperial Japanese Army surrendered during the entire Pacific War. Some of the views I could get with a drone were really breathtaking. I was alone and free in incredible places. La Rochelle also taught me how much I had already learned from my trip. It is during a meal in a cafe there that I felt the wholesomeness of being fine on my own, of being great on my own. All other things and people can add on that, but can't replace it. Oh wow, I did not put some protection. I was in La Rochelle this morning. Yesterday was a bit of a random evening because I got a contact of a friend of the people who hosted me in Nantes and this guy was having rehearsal because he plays the sax uh, so I went to the rehearsal in the end his girlfriend was not feeling so well but another guy <laughs> that was there from the band hosted me so thank you very much Fred it was amazing By feeling this sense of wholesomeness, one automatically feels less subject to the idea of rushing things or two places. So I took my time to Bordeaux, changing the original plan. But I stopped in the city that I did not um, expect at all. Like it was only my plan. I just had it on my map because from here you can get a ferry because I will have to cross that tomorrow. Um, and I found out there is only one camping that is in the former uh, citadel, so the former um, fortress where the soldiers were. And now it all looks super fancy, the citadel itself, but the camping is still quite cheap and it's super cool because you're camping between the walls of the fortress. From my diary, on the ferry we appear like a Wes Anderson film's character. Two young pilgrims who just met on the way but look like twins. Two older French couples who every year go for a bike tour in a different place but look as technical as somebody traveling for a whole year. An American couple speaking bad French, traveling with two funny dogs and debating constantly on who should be carrying the stroller with the dogs. And me. Finally, I arrived in Bordeaux and explored, waiting for my dad to join me for the next stretch.